Chemistry lecture number 30, electron configuration and the periodic chart. The periodic chart can be used to predict the valence electron configuration of the elements. The configurations repeat in an orderly pattern. Now here are some electron configurations of uh, group 1 elements. So we're doing helium, lithium, and sodium. So these are all in group 1. Now helium, lithium, and sodium are all in group 1, or 1A on the periodic chart, and notice that they all have one valence electron. All elements in group 1 have one valence electron. So here's the configuration of helium. It ends in S1, so one valence electron. All right. Here's the configuration of lithium. Here's the complete configuration, but we're only interested in the outer or valence electrons. Remember, the valence electrons are the electrons in the highest uh, energy level. So the highest energy level is the second energy level and we have one electron. And then sodium, well what's the highest energy level with electrons? It's the third energy level. We ignore all of these. Third energy level, 3s1 means it has one electron in the third energy level. So all of these elements here have one outer or one valence electron. So let's sort of repeat that or let's go on to the next one. Now we're going to do beryllium, magnesium, and calcium. So beryllium, magnesium, and calcium, they're all in group two right here. Take a look at the configuration. Here's the configuration of beryllium. We're only going to look at the highest energy level with electrons, so that's the second energy level, and it has two valence electrons. Likewise, magnesium, the highest energy level with electrons, is the third energy level, so that's the end configuration, two electrons. Calcium, instead of writing out all this 1s, 2s stuff, it's just the configuration of argon with 4s, 2 tacked on. So that's the end configuration. The fourth energy level is the highest energy level with electrons for calcium. It has two electrons. So beryllium, magnesium, and calcium are all in group 2. And notice they all have two valence electrons. So all elements in group 2a have two valence electrons. So notice also that for both groups 1a and 2a, the valence electrons are in the s orbitals. So group 1a and 2a are sometimes called the s block elements. So these elements are these, this group right here, these are called the s block elements. Now these are the elements in this group right here. All right. So these elements right here are the ones that we're going to focus on. We're going to kind of go diagonally, boron, silicon, arsenic, tellurium, and astatine. So we're going to go across like that. All right. You should notice a pattern. Boron is in period two, and the end configure starts with two something. Also, boron is in group three, and if you notice, 2 plus 1 gives me 3, so it has 3 valence electrons. Let's do it again for silicon. Silicon is in period 3 on the periodic chart, and it's in group 4. Period 3, and it's the outer electrons are in the third energy level. Group 4, silicon has 2 plus 2, or 4 valence electrons. Let's do it for arsenic. Arsenic is in period 4 on the periodic chart, and it's Valence electrons are in the fourth energy level. Three, we can ignore that. We're only interested in the highest energy level with electrons. And then two plus three is five. It's in group 5A, and it has five valence electrons. And we can do it for uh, acetine. <coughs> Excuse me, acetine is in period six on the periodic chart, and the highest energy level with electrons is the sixth energy level. We can ignore these. It's in group 7, and 2 plus 5 is 7, so it has 7 valence electrons. So, like groups 1a and 2a, the group number of the element corresponds with the number of valence electrons. Um, boron in group 3 has 3 valence electrons. Silicon in group 4a has 4 valence electrons, and so on. So for representative elements 1a through 8a, the group number corresponds with the number of valence electrons. And you can also say that the outermost sublevel with electrons is the P sublevel. The end configurations all end in P. So for groups 3A through 8A, these are sometimes called the P block elements. So 
all of these elements right here, they end with P something. So these are the P block elements. Okay. And notice also that the period of the element corresponds to its end configuration. A tellurium is in period 5. The end configuration of tellurium, 5 S2, 4D, 10, 5P4, shows that the highest energy level of the valence electrons is the fifth energy level. All right. Don't worry about that. And this relationship also holds for groups 1A and 2A. So thus, for groups 1A through 8A, the energy level of the valence electrons corresponds with the period number. So, if you look at this, um, what's the energy level of the outer electron in, say, uh, barium? So barium is in period 6, so we know that its outer electron is going to be in the uh, 6 energy level. We also know that since it's in group uh, 2, it's going to be an S-block element. Now, you can use the periodic chart to help you find an uh, element if you know its end configuration. So which element ends with 5s2? All right, so that's the end configuration of some element. So 5 tells me it's in period 5. So here's the fifth period on our periodic chart. So our element is somewhere here. And then s, that tells me it's going to be in one of these two groups. S2, two valence electrons, well that's group two. So it's going to be in group two. So our element is strontium. Because strontium is in period five, group two. Okay. Let's try another one. Which element ends with 3s2, 3p1. All right, well, 3 is the energy level. So here's 3. It's going to be somewhere here. Whoops. And then 2 plus 1 is 3. So it's going to be in the third group. 1, 2, 3. So here is group 3a right here and it crosses at aluminum. So that's our answer. It's aluminum because aluminum is in the 1, 2, 3rd period and it has 1, 2, 3 valence electrons so it's going to be in group 3A. Let's try another one. Which element ends with 4s2, 3d10, 4p5? All right. Well, highest energy level with electrons is the fourth energy level. All right, so we can ignore that. Four, so it's the fourth energy level. One, two, three, four. So it's somewhere here. And then how many valence or outer electrons? Well, two plus five is seven. So here's the seventh group. Right there like that. It's bromine. BR. It's bromine because bromine is in the 1, 2, 3rd, 4th period and 2 plus 7, 2 plus 5 is 7 and it's in the 7th column. So 4th period, 7th column, it's bromine. Helium is the only element that doesn't quite fit our scheme. Uh, it has two valence electrons, but we place it in group 8 since it shares identical properties with group 8A elements. So here's helium right here in group 8. And helium doesn't have 8 electrons at all. It only has 2 electrons. But we put it right here because its chemical properties match those of neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. So the periodic chart is not perfect. Here are the end configurations of some transition elements. So the transition elements are right here, this area right here. We're going to look at scandium, zirconium, and was it tallium, I think? Anyway, end configuration. It's in period, scandium is in period 4, and it starts with 4 as something, then it goes to 3 
D something. Zirconium is in period five, so it starts out five S something, and then four D something. Then tallium, you can probably see this, it starts in, it's in period six, so the end configuration starts with six, and then it ends with uh, five D something. So they all end in D, and the number before the D is always one less than the first term. So the period of the elements match the first term in the end configuration. For example, scandium is in period four, and it starts with four S2. Uh, the energy level of the last term is one level below the first term. So four minus one is three. So the last term for SC is gonna be three D1. And notice that the configurations end with a D sublevel. So the transition elements are sometimes called the D block elements. So these are the D block elements. Right. Now a transition element can sometimes be identified from its end configuration. Sometimes the electrons dance around and do tricky things, but we can identify a few. Which element ends 4s2, 3d6? So since it ends in D, it tells us that it's just going to be a transition element. So we're only going to pay attention to this region. Okay, so 4 means it's in the fourth period. So it's in period 4 in the transition zone. So we're only going to pay attention to this section right here. It ends with D6. So we're going to count six elements in the fourth row of the transition zone. So six, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. So iron is the sixth element in the fourth row of the transition area. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's iron. Okay. Let me double check and make sure I did the other ones. And I think we're okay. All right. Let's try another one. Which element ends with a 6s2, 4f14, 5d7? All right. So six means it's going to be in the sixth period of the transition zone. And I know it's the transition zone because it ends in D, so we're only going to pay attention to this area. Don't worry about this. D7, so we're going to count seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's iridium. It's the seventh element in the sixth row of the transition area. So we only count off the elements that are in the transition area. And here are the configuration for some elements in the lanthanide and actinide groups. So the lanthanides are, and actinides are down below here. And the lanthanides are considered to have been plucked out of the sixth period. And the actinides are considered to have been plucked out of the seventh period. All right, so these are considered period six and period seven. So, here's what we notice. Praseodymium is in period six and it starts six as something and then it ends in four F something. And then europium is in period six so it starts six and then it ends with four. So, notice that the second term is energy level is two less than the first term. Uh, six minus two is four and they all end in F. Here's plutonium. It's in period seven, so it starts seven, then seven minus two is five, then it ends in F. So lanthanides and actinides all end in the F sublevel, so these are called the F block elements. So these are called the F block elements. And notice also that the energy of the F sublevel is two less than its period. So again, praseodymium is in period six. It starts six as something, but it ends four F3. So PR, period six, six minus two is four. That's where the four comes from. And then it ends in F something. Okay, quick summary of uh, some of what we went through. S block elements are groups 1A and 2A. Uh, P block elements are 3A through 8A. D block elements are the transition elements, and the F block elements are on the bottom right here, the, the uh, actinoids and lanthanides. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 30, electron configuration and the periodic chart.